The best faction of Andromeda's Edge is the Plutonian Empire. There are a lot of Easter eggs in this game, and this is one of them. You see, Luke designed a game with Tom Jolly called Manhattan Project Energy Empire. That's an amazing worker placement game about the rise of the atomic age. And in it, nations are developing their industry, their commerce, their government, and tapping into new sources of energy. Sound familiar? Energy is a big part of Andromeda's Edge. And we're talking nuclear energy, the wave of the future. It was Unity that first funded recursive nuclear power, but shut down the program due to disastrous results. The Plutonians, who are historically energy poor, have captured Unity scientists and discovered this new power source. It's only a matter of time before they build the most powerful weapon in the galaxy. And that's where you come in. Your first power is the Doomsday Clock. And yes, you have a clock on your faction board that goes all the way around to midnight. You can gleefully tell everyone what time it is and when Doom is coming. Each turn, you're going to be moving the clock one, but also you can spend a resource to push it one more. And when you reach midnight, that's where the fun begins. You get to push up a progress track of your choice three times and gain all the benefits. So that means if you eye something on the supremacy track that someone's about to get, you could boost up the supremacy track suddenly and grab it. You could go up the science track and get those key discoveries. In fact, those often have progress track boosts in them. So if you get those, you're gonna boost up tracks again and everyone's gonna be envious of this power. But where they're really going to be bad is your second power is called Sabotage. Now, there are some aggressive factions in this game. Fighting is a big part of Andromeda's Edge. But this faction, the Plutonian Empire, is just plain out mean. Every time you return to station, if you pay one energy, each opponent will have to damage one module of their choice in their space station. Now, this is the type of power that makes me want to play into the part of Andromeda's Edge where you could launch and return to station immediately, launch again and return, and then constantly damage everyone's modules. Even the Technoblurps are not going to be able to withstand that much damage. Now, of course, what really happens in Andromeda's Edge is that you often find lots of things to do on the board and work yourself into positions, and so you don't always come back to return to station, and it's going to cost energy, which is very precious to you, considering that you're spending your resources on the clock. But that being said, I definitely think there's a strategy in coming back really fast and damaging modules on everyone's station. Now, what your ship upgrade is for the Plutonian Empire is it's the Peace de Resistance. It's the Doomsday device. It's a heavy cruiser with four dice. It has attack just like a fighter, which means it can launch to an occupied space, suddenly disrupting everything. And it is targeting, which means it's never going to roll below a two. It's massive. This is the best ship in Andromeda's Edge, and it's yours. So definitely, you're going to want to get up the industry track, at least to get an upgrade, get the Doomsday device, and wreck havoc in the galaxy. I happen to have played against Danny Standring, who had the Doomsday device, and she had also some targeting computers, and she was beating up on me every time I entered the edge. It is a massive ship, and it's a huge part of your strategy to control the board, and you can do that with this ship. Now, in addition, the strategy of the Plutonian Empire is to get up tracks. I definitely think that you're going to want to push up the tracks that you start in, which is supremacy and science. They have huge benefits, and if you use your doomsday clock to push up supremacy, you're going to get key tokens. And as I said, you're going to get key tokens in science as well. But you have other options. You could push up industry and get a lot of upgrades, get your armada upgraded. You could also push up civilization and get hands of tactic cards and have tons of options. So this faction, you're going to focus on tracks heavily. And I think you're going to want to maybe not focus as big on an engine or possibly use an engine that has an output of a lot of resources, as opposed to an engine that say converts things, because you're going to need as many resources as you can to get all of those resources to push the clock. You want to be pushing the clock every turn if possible, because even in a 50 point game, there is a chance you could push the clock two times. Definitely in a 60 or 70 point game, you can push the clock two times and then you can even possibly have some turns where you don't push it. But otherwise, it's a race to get that clock going as much as possible. I love playing the Plutonian Empire. Not only is it Luke's favorite, and I really get into that Manhattan Project Energy Empire vibe with the Plutonians, but I also love the clock. I just love that there's a, there's a difference to this faction, the way it feels. I love the options of being able to pick whatever track I want to boost up. It's so much fun. 
Now, it's also got a lot of power. It scares everybody else. You, they don't know when you're going to come back and damage them. They don't know when you're going to build that doomsday device and dominate the board. So I think this, this faction has a lot of power, nuclear power, and it's a lot of fun to play.